change camera quick. Welcome everybody. <sighs> Are we turning in the stable studios again? Thursday. No idea what we're gonna do. Well we do now. We, we didn't half an hour ago. <laughs> Got my cup of tea, so everything's good. Uh, I've got a couple of nice young fellows. Young fellows? Did I say young fellows? <laughs> I was a Freudian slip somehow, I don't know. Really young fellows. <laughs> pop these put pop these two. Oh, there's the there's the ancient mariner up here, <laughs> Terry. Hello everybody. Oh, it's not a sailor at all, but no more. And we got people twisted trees. Good afternoon, everyone. Joe's not in today, guys. She's not uh, just feeling hundred percent today, so she's uh she's I'm taking the day off. So no singing today. But we might need singing. But you never know. Terry has a lovely voice, I have to say. Yeah. Which I'll be watching. She can sing from there. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> so what we're going to do today, I'll put you back in the background and we'll have a look at this piece of wood that's on the lathe. It is a little piece of cherry. For those of you that don't recognise the, the bark, it has a few kind of branch things on it. I have it currently mounted on a woodworm screw, which is not my favourite way of mounting anything, but we're going to go for it today. Tailstock support. What we intend to do is make a natural edge bowl globish kind of thing. So it's about, uh, what did I tell you it was, Pete? I've forgotten already. Take measure. Inches. It's about eight, uh, eight, eight, eight inches and a bit that way, and about five inches that way. So we're going to try and make it into a kind of globish sort of shape. So first thing first is to get it rounded off or get this big lump off the end here, and then put a ten on it. So I'll crack on with that, and uh, Terry and Pete can entertain you guys. Let me know who's in. Well, you don't think on. this because I'm rubbish at this. So if you haven't typed in two comments, you're not getting mentioned. <laughs> just, just as simple as that, boys. That shoe's all told. Simple as that. So today we have with us um, Ben Beekoft, Brian at Howard Turning, wherever the hell that is. Uh, some Hallian. Brian Watkins, Chris Dodds, Clive Rogerson, Eric Winkler, Four King Owls, Lawrence Bagasia, Malcolm Douglas, Paul Hooten, Rex B, Richard Phelan, Robert Dolman, Steve Hale, Terry Bartlett, it's, um, well, you know, and it's jumped. Oh, right. Lewis, a conduct craftsman, in the Yorkshire Gip, Todd Grinko Woodworks, Tommy's Workshop, and we're turning by Barry. Welcome <coughs> Tommy, uh, Chris Dodds, I don't know if you said that, I can't remember, Clive Rogers. You say Chris Dodds, yeah. Paul Finley. Oh, I missed, yeah. Hi, Paul. Well, welcome along, everybody. Thank you very much for coming in to see me today. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you have a good time. Any questions, don't forget, put a couple of questions cues in there so we can see it or maybe. and you've got 32 watching and i'll just put my thumb up which makes 11 thumbs up oh yeah. thanks pete that'll be a first pete gave well, I, don't normally, thumbs up. I normally wait till you've done something good first but i get my cue in in i'm i think But yeah, I know already that you're being guided by airworms on this one because we've uh, already yeah. told you what to cut. So. And you've got yeah. a clear release. Really, when so. you're guided by airworms, it tends to be pretty pretty good. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> when you're left to do it on your own, you mix things like vols. That's when it goes wrong, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Eight days, colourful things. <laughs> what you'd like it to. Rex B's got a question. He says, you have the most glossy bed rest I have ever seen. Well, what, that's do you do to keep it, what do you do to keep it that way? 400 grit sandpaper. 400 grit and cleans it every three minutes. Hello to Greg Alexander. Good afternoon. And to Roger Kent. Why am I getting kicked out now? 
Trying to take too big a cut, that's why you're getting kicked out. There we go. Do we see the Swiss would turn it in? There we go. Hi, Susie. Hi, Robert. Hi, Robert. Right, that should be big enough for a tenant. So we'll just uh, make it the right size now. Bruce is suggesting your lathe bed is only 3 mil thick now from all the sand in yeah. it. Uh, it's not that bad. It's only 400 grit. It might take a year or two to get rid of it. Well, Robert Dolman's got the, uh, another answer. He says he thinks you buy a new lathe every week. <laughs> new lathe every week. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Andrew from Wavy Wood sheds in. Hello, Andrew. Hiya. There we go. That should be enough, I think, for our tenor. Yeah, there we loads. Nearly too much, I think. In fact, let's set a pair of calipers for uh, 48 mil, which is the size of my jaws. Oh, look. That must have been what I used before. So a fair bit to go down yet. Changed to my 3 8 bowl gauge. How long ago was that word cut then, Brian? Uh, this cherry was cut last year. Right. And it's been in my woodshed ever since. Cut and sealed using PVA glue, so there are a few little radio cracks in the end, but I don't think they're too deep. Mm -hmm. And there's none in that end at all, so. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's not dry by any means, but it's not wet either. Alf Keys is in, hello Alf. Steady, brain, steady. Yeah, sort your tool rest out first, off the end of it. Yep. Just a tiny little bit more to go there. I think Rexy meant PVA glue. PVA glue, is that all I said? Not PB. Yeah, well, right, Rex sorry, thought you PB, said PB sorry. glue. No, PVA, I thought I said PVA. PVA in a Scottish accent says it sounds like PB. Yeah, it's just, you know, what he's like. Oh, I blame my Scottish accent. Mix that with an Irish accent as well. It's even worse. I was complaining about my Scottish accent last night. Said my voiceover was really nice last night. I don't know near half of it. I fell asleep. Yeah, I know. You put um, Adams, I love return is Adam, baby to sleep. He was grateful yeah. for that. Yep. I think I need to I think I need to do some uh, bedtime stories. Yeah. Robert is saying the first bowl he ever turned was in cherry. I gotta say cherry is a nice wood to turn. It cuts it is very nice. Oh, yeah, it's very nice to turn. Some of it Bates smells off. like um, baking cakes. It's lovely. I'll, I'll finish this little nub off after a while. We'll just cut it off in the back with the saw. Now we'll try and make this, take these corners off, make this a bit rounder now. Clive We're not in any what... today. We're kind of relaxing today, guys. So. Clive wants to know what uh, what's that U-shaped one on the end, a split there. What you, what you one? This here? Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's, that's been a branch there. That's, and that's a, a little branch inclusion. Yeah. So that, that is, corner will be coming off, so it's not an issue. The whole thing, that whole thing's coming off just no matter. What Michael McEwen said, "My compliments again on the absolutely splendid, splendid vase." Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate and that. And Grenko said, "After the thousand-pound vase, we expect all turning of Brian to be wow." Yeah. Hashtag wow. Well, I will try my best, guys, but the, it's it's. It's quite hard to maintain a standard. Just yeah, the extra work. take a long time, you know. Sometimes the artistic idea and the right piece of wood just don't come together at the same time. No, that's true. If anybody hasn't seen the, the vase video, I'll put a link in there. 
which is well worth going to watch after this. Yeah, it's a good way to spend 28 minutes, I think. If you haven't seen it, people, nip over and have a look at it when you've got time. Not now, of course. It'll be watching the news on the TV for sure, guys. I was talking to a lady this morning who, uh, you know, my friend Mary next door. Um, Terry? Mm. Yep. Uh, or Irish Mary, as <laughs> Terry called her. <laughs> um, she's uh, a bit perturbed about what's happening in, across the world. It's, it's a bit like that. Yeah, and she's worried all of us. She's been too busy watching the news. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a torture. So with the 24-hour news, they just keep repeating the same bits over and over again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Dave Oldie's just joined us, as a Shane Hurst. Hello, Bob. And I Chris did. And Bailey Woodworks. And Green has got a question. He said, another random brown bowl, Brian. Lol. Well, it may be random, but it may brown, not be brown. But if you want it coloured brown, Glenn, I'm sure you'll do that. Um, well, I've got I've got earth colour there. I can make it brown, or or just throw a whole lot of colours at it, and it'll go brown. <laughs> That's what usually happens. That's good. A bark's chipping off, or I wonder if it's going to chip as you do it. Cut that way. Yeah, well, I come to, to do the. Uh, if I'm trying to leave a live edge on the other, I'll cut it. I'll be cutting it the other way, Terry. Trying to yeah. make sure. Okay, you got a question. Have you measured the moisture content of that log? No. Nope. You just guessed it. I just guess it. So the moisture content is kind of mostly dry ish. Yeah. Mostly dry ish, that's about it. Michelle Higgins let just, is just. Let me just, let me just test a piece here now. Oh, here we so just take a piece of my hand, give it a crunch of it. If it crackles, it's dry. <laughs> if it squishes, it's wet. And that's that's kind of okay. Yeah. It's a kind of in-between feeling. There's that little branch inclusion loop. It's still going. So that might be an added little feature. Maybe. We shall see. <sighs> Let's bring this round a bit, because we're going to bring this all the way around and bring it up to the, up to the middle a bit. I'm not too worried about the shape of it at the moment, guys. It's a bit, just a bit rough, but we'll, yeah. once I get these corners off the wings, we'll uh, try and do some of that. And I'm approaching this with the handle really low. So as we get a nice shear cut. I think we can get him to put a double mortise in there, bro, Pete. Oh, I don't know. Uh, no, I'm not falling for that one again. <laughs> we could possibly go for the mortise with a tenon in it. Yeah, that would work. You'd be telling me next you want a wing mortise. Well, of course we do. I'm up to you guys now. We expect only the best now. I'm watching you guys now. <laughs> Rex is asking when Mark might, the gentleman would turn and might do more lives. I'm not sure when he decides to. Rex. Yeah. Yep, whenever he takes the notion. He's on the road back, back to home today, I believe. Yep. So I did send him an invite to, to Earworm today, so he won't even be in the chat unless he stops. He's driving back, so I yeah. Think I think I'll just take, step out and step out the way and see what happened. <laughs> Discretion being the better part of all of it. a bit of bark in it. Nice yeah, no, in it's it. a big chunk of wood come out of it. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. That might change it. Yeah, well, it's, it's come out of this end of the hill. <clears throat> right, take your tool rest around towards the chuck. Yep. And cut, cut it that way, puts you further out the line of fire, and 
effectively if you're cutting it cutting the bottom of the bowl on the top, so it's the right way to cut. Mm. We're cutting it like this, Pete. Do a yeah. pull cut there. Do a pull cut there and just bring that. Yeah, I'll go for a pull cut there, get yourself started, get your shape in. Neil M's just joined us, so Neil. Referee's got a question. He says, is it better to put a chuck on it now and work on the outside, or is it 50-50? 50-50, um, I would say. Yeah, it's not... Uh, it's between centres at the moment, isn't it? So, it's quite safe. It's quite safe, and... Um, even though you're coming over the top, it's easier in your head to um, finish polishing it while it's just way around. Take it to com completion. Let's have a little look at that. Let's keep an eye on it. That should be fine. Mm. Hmm. 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 What a deep chunk, is it? Yeah, it is, I. Take a little bit more for length. There's the plan, Pete. Thank you, Eric. I, I do try to give uh, sensible advice in between the, the nonsense. <laughs> You've got to decipher which is sensible and which is nonsense, it's, though. It's usually, it's usually all pretty sensible, I'll have to say from Pete. Oh, Keith's got a I'll... question. He said, Are you going for a natural edge bowl? Yes. Sort of a bit. Yes. Right, now you've got a weird shape there, mate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's the other bit? Well, it's, it's not exactly a the... sphere, is it? Uh, not yet, not yet. Give oh, me time. Give it's me got time. a flat. An angle well, and then a curve. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Looks like somebody sat on one of your vases. Yeah. Normal shape for Brian, then, really. Rob and Copper O's in. I think. Yeah, he was here earlier, but he had to go and do some work stuff. Okay. That's terrible, isn't it? Right, at all. Ben Jammin's in. Oh, well, Ben. Hmm. The trouble with a shape like this is you've got to be careful because um, you could be cutting downhill all the time well very suddenly you could find yourself cutting uphill yep. yeah and you go over that top that's not a little like anything at all i can't really see it in the, look on the camera getting there um you've got a little bit more you've got a flat on the other side i believe got this yeah, you just need to go down to get rid of that. <laughs> not winging, get on with it. I'm not winging, I'm not winging at all. I'm just doing it, I'm just doing it. Brian's got a bad knee today, people, just to let you know. He's struggling to stand and he's struggling to wander around. So he's being lazy and standing still. Standing still is the hard bit. It's the easy bit. Moving from leg to leg is the hard bit. Oh, 
Yeah, a bit more speed in that, can I? Yeah. Ben Jammer's got a question for Brian. With the design of your banjo, does the rotating arm prevent the tool post from falling through? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Tool no, post can't fall through. It's, it's offset. Hmm. You can have the tool post go right over down through. Yeah. There's a hole in the bottom as well. Yes. Right, that's okay there. Still got a little bit of a flat there, yeah. so a little bit more and we're branching off this this uh, branch. Take it out. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, Terry. Nobody said it had to be huge. You can have a small ball. Michael McEwen asks, one of the horses took issue with you, Brian? Nope. In the leg. I think he was dancing, actually. My body's just problem. taking issue with me. It's too old, and it's been abused too much. I blame the army for that, but my knees are shot to pieces, guys. Just... Hey, that's, Robert says just... it's all that pesky walking and exercise you did, Brian. No yeah, need for that nonsense at your age. <laughs> could be, yeah. On that machine. Be. Yeah, walking on a treadmill at my age, eh? What an idiot. Yeah. We all thought you were silly. I don't know what it is, guys. I think it's maybe something to do with a cruciate ligament. I don't know. We probably need to see somebody get x ray or something or scan of it. I'm just trying. Six weeks off with your leg up in the air. In plaster, that might do it. Go some peace. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Why, well, says, says, keep going, Brian. It'll soon be the size of a tennis ball. Yeah, but look at all the lovely shavings. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, look at all the shavings I have to pick up. For me, the enjoyment is making the shavings with it. Yeah, the rubbish is left it. in it. Rubbish is left on the chuck at the end of the day. It's just, you know, that's, that's rubbish. It's the shavings of man. That's it. There we go. Looking good. That's about better shape now, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Is that flat gone? Yep. Excellent. This, this one's not going, that's staying. That's no, that'll stay gone. natural. But that's kind of flattish and Good. I get a decent cut in there that would help. Sharp the gouge. Change gouges. <laughs> Try this little three eighths one just so you can get a half decent finishing cut there. So I anchor the tool, rub the bevel, lift till we find a cut. I want to go the other way. Yeah, okay, I feel it now, Brian. Yeah, real nice shavings there just at the minute, guys. So I'm just going to persevere with it. Yeah, that's cool. Todd says it's 11.21 <clears throat> p.m. Thursday. Where he is? It's almost uh, tomorrow. 11.21. Let's have a look at that. I think that was a nice cut. Brian Watkins, Watkins, it's nice beginning cut. to look like, beginning to look like the Swede he's just peeled for dinner. I'm <laughs> 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 sure that's a compliment on that. <laughs> Lawrence has said, I usually leave the quill of the tail stock as short as possible to avoid stress and vibration on the quill. Is it a good idea or not? It is. It's an uh, excellent yeah, idea, I'm... and we were discussing this before we started. Um... The reason Brian's got it out that far is to allow room for the banjo to move. So, if I... The lathe designers need to change the design of the tailstock so that the quill overhangs the edge of the tailstock block. Aye, this bit it overhangs yeah. this way. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of back to front because it's leaning away from it instead of leaning towards it. Yeah. That's but what I think. the quill on that lathe is solid. Oh, yeah. It never, it doesn't vibrate at all. Yeah. The way it's made. 
But even on a solid quill, if you're drilling, it's a good idea not to take it out yeah, too far in one too go. Far. Um, See, I could bring that. I can bring that in a bit now. Yeah, because you've taken the log down. Because yeah, I've taken got... a whole lot off the off the bottom of that, so I can bring it in a bit and shorten it. That's a good Doug idea. Miller's... Keep it as short as possible. Doug Miller's joined us. Hello, Doug. Hi, Doug. Hi, Doug. Welcome along, mate. So now I just finish off and get a bottom on this. Three years. Todd says it's 7.24 a.m. So Todd's just getting up. Chris is just going to bed. Soon. Bit of self-promotion here. I've got a premiere coming out tonight at 7.30 p.m. GMT. Don't miss out, people. That's the link for it. Terry assures me it's September next week, so therefore I've got to do a yes, live September week after week. next. Um, <clears throat> so you'll be there Terry. for that. Right. Let me just Barry's recreation is just coming out, oh, Barry. It's on the outside of this. Oh. Huh. What are you doing over there, son? You said that. Is that Morris? That's Maurice. Don't you start. Bad enough of that Lewis fella. Trying to oh, steal nice. the nail of my oh, mouse. Nice. <laughs> so we'll try this with a inertia sander. I don't think it'll work actually. No, it won't. We'll use a power sander. Yeah. Or, or my house a drill. Yeah, that's the one where I will be using a three inch pad because um, it gives you a, a wider surface for areas you want to miss. It does. You're right, Pete. Chris said, Pete, that few months went quick. I know, I was surprised, but Terry assures me that um, yeah. it is past September and he's on holiday, so I'll cover it. It's the proper camera, it's, proper, it's the proper calendar you've got to go by, more calendar. Don't want to worry about any other people. Being a pensioner, problem. I don't know. I don't know what day oh. it is anyway. The, the problem with your calendar, Terry, is it's on just constantly on holiday. Holiday mode. Freddy sheds in. Oh, Cody. Hi, Cody. The tail stop. In the way, or banjo, should I say? I should tear it away next week as well. But um, I'm not available, so Brian's covering lunchtime and evening. Yep. Hopefully on a really interesting two-part. Keen, you see. Keen. Well, if I can get out this weekend, the two-part of next week will be a nice piece of bottle. Uh, my good lady wife, as who you all know as Michelle, has asked for a, for a table lamp. Table lamp? Yep. And I know, I happen to know that Terry's next life. Aha! Aha I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm um, gonna put him under pressure now. Terry's going to be turning an angle poise lamp. That'll be interesting. Really working angle poise lamp with Holy technical function. drawings and everything. He's going to have to do some thinking and planning. Yep. No, I'm not. I'm on holiday. Somebody else is going to do that, and I'm going to just turn it when I get back. <laughs> Easy. I'll wing it. You're going to wing it, are you? How? Oh, you know me. Not the leggy. Have a look at that. See where we are. Not about the engineering drawings. I might do, but that takes time. Got a little bit of tear out on Things that. Things I'll yeah. do for you lot. Oh, we have a challenge for you, Brian. Robert said on your two-parter, he dares you to leave the shavings from lunchtime for the evening. Then do the clean-up. What did he say? <laughs> leave shavings. <laughs> Brian will burn the workshop down if I had that, that mm. happen. He'd have to burn the workshop down. Mm. I'm not too sure that's doable. <laughs> Dave Oatley wants to know if Mark's doing the drawing for me. Well... 
Well, There's I hope not. <laughs> I'm going to do this little bit here because I'm getting a bit of a bounce here and it's missing it. Yeah. No, I don't, Todd. I don't get withdrawal symptoms when I go away. I think I'll try and live with that now. Oh, this is a good one from Lawrence. Brian, are you interested in participating in the Axminster March competition with that nice vase you have made? You still got a picture nice of it? Vibe, I have, and I am. Cool. Didn't you make that in February? No, nope, I did not. I might actually submit the uh, the fire globe. Yeah, submit both. If you haven't seen so that, you can't do more than one. I don't think it's in the rules. You can't do more than one. I haven't read it, mine. But... Mark's away at the moment, Barry. He's travelling back. Of course, now. if Brian does go into the Axminster competition, he can't win because they won't ship to Northern Ireland anyway. No, they won't. If they do, it's under a pound postage. Well, they wouldn't ship my lathe at all. I had to get nope. my, ship, my lathe shipped in through Dublin. Funny how they could ship it to Dublin, but they wouldn't ship it to me. Mm. Strange that, eh? Because it suggested that I had to give them a, some kind of number, and it's uh, they were the exporter, not me. Still not happy, 100% happy with that little bit there. You just lock that and place them up. Yeah, that's where I find a bigger pad helps on that sort of work. I'll let you in a secret, Pete. I, ha I have a three-inch pad. I have no three-inch discs to put on it. Well, you got a load of sandpaper. Come. Yeah. yeah. Square on it. There we go. It's better. Cut yourself a square piece and stick it on a three-inch pad. Should be fine. It's done now. That's the. Uh, that's all the tool marks and all the. the uh, what do you call it? What do you call that stuff? Tear out stuff done. So we'll just nip up a couple of grits quickly. Rex, please sure got a question. It's Rex. But on a wood barrel, is there a different technique for sanding the flat part smooth? The platter. The sanded and sanded still needs lots more. What am I doing wrong? You have 100, 150, 220, 320, then back to 220. Um, there is no point in using... 150 until the 100 has done its job. Yeah. So when you finish with 100, the only thing that should be in there is 100 grit scratches. scratches. The yep. If they're bigger than yeah. if they're bigger than that, you might have to go back to 80 grit. Yep. But the and idea then, of the, the idea of the grits is the, the the heaviest grit you use, like if you're using 80 grit, that gets rid of all your tool marks and all your tear out and everything else. And then you should be left with just some 80 grit marks. The, I go from 80 to 120. The 120 takes away the 80 grit marks. And then I go up to 240, and that takes away the 120 marks. Yeah. So you should be left with a smooth surface then. So 90% of your sanding should be done with the heaviest grit. Correct. After that, you're just removing the marks from the previous grit. Uh, the problem is, uh, in, in the community currently, and for the last two years anyway, we've been watching guys do lives, 
and getting them done in an hour. And people are kind of getting into the mindset that it takes an hour to do both, when really no, that's not the case. If you want to do something right and have a really good finish on it, you've got to take the time it takes. Reality is it takes about an hour to cut a rough ball yeah. um, and about two hours to finish that ball. Almost twice as long on finishing as it is on cutting. Um, when doing it on a live, then you do cut a few corners and you um, you rush things that don't need to be rushed just to make it fit the live. Yep. Just a bit like I'm doing with the sanding. So the first I part of your sanding really, is actually the last part of your cutting. Yeah, I suppose cut. really, really, I suppose really then when you do a live for just an hour, you know, that's just... I don't know who plucked that out of the air. You could do a live of five hours if you want. Well, you I could. Think it goes back to the old but, theory of lunch hours, really. Yeah. Yep. Lunchtime live, get it done. I know. Kinda. Like get, uh, Glenn says, you should be quitting at two forty and then using Yorkshire grit anyway. <laughs> I don't know if Rex can get out of Yorkshire grit. Really? Yeah, he can, but I'm not sure that, that would be appropriate on the uh, bird that he's turning. Yeah. Full of holes and. Whatever. Yeah, birds are birds are a kind of category all by themselves. Yeah. But you, the pro, the thing about a bird is, it's supposed to have funny bits on it. So I, when I did the last one I did the other day, um, that when I sanded it, I just tried to get the the surface nice and smooth. But there was bits in it that wasn't smooth. Yeah. Full character. Yeah, natural wood. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, as wood turners, all we're trying to do is enhance the natural beauty of the wood. Well, Glenn's in the chat, and I'm sure he'll correct me if I'm wrong. On a nice flat piece of wood, you send it to 240. And you start your Yorkshire grit, which will start as if it was a 320. Um, so it's the next grade up from 240. And as the grit uh, fractures and breaks down, it gets up to about a thousand. So yep. every bit of sanding after 240 can be done with with the Yorkshire grit. That's that's my understanding how it works. Yep, and with the added saving, of course, that there is no dust. Yeah, it holds the dust in in the paste, so you don't have to breathe it. And the phone of the dust, obviously, the um, more of a problem it is. Crystal's is suggesting everyone should retire, then you can take as long as you want, Brian. Yeah. Well, that's good, yeah. But the good thing about cool. YouTube is you can watch your, your hours worth of lunch and you say, oh, I must go back and see how he fa see that he finished that. See how it turned mm. out. Yeah. And we can right, stay right. as long as we like because we're retired, so. Yeah. No Pete's retired. Terry's retired. Yeah. We're all pensioners. So those you you people that are working, you ought to set your alarms to come back. Hit the hit the little bell icon to know that it jumps up onto your reminders on YouTube. That way you can come back to see it after you've gone out and earned your wages to pay our pensions. That's exactly right. Well said, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> after all, I've worked. I don't know how long have I worked now. Uh, Fifty-six years. To pay for right. the previous pensions. Well, my my uh, works pension comes from uh, a foreign country, so oh, I'm quite oh. happy with that. Yeah. Let me just stick a bit of sanding sealer on this guy, so we'll see what it looks like. And Robert's at work, look, but he's not really working. He's watching you. <laughs> Good man, Robert. The also gets says he wishes he could retire. So do we. He wouldn't be in here all the time, would he? Yeah, he wouldn't be well, here to give me a give he me can't a hard retire time. because where else are we going to get Yorkshire grit from? Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, you're stuck with it, Grim. Unless you can make, um, I don't know, 75 million canisters and store them in stock. I'll see me out. Yeah, me. I'll see, I'll see you, day, Pete. <laughs> There's not much uh, figure in this wood, really. 
thought there might have been a bit more than it was being cherry. Yeah, it's going to be a pleasing shape. It's all right. Yeah, it looked good. Cherry's well, got a nice colour anyway, so the colour of cherry. Yeah. I think, Not warm uh, colour. Yeah, it's a nice warm colour. It's not like a bowling ball there. There are three holes in it. I said, I said a bit go. like a bowling ball. <laughs> That's not much like a bowling ball, to be honest. Yeah. No, Chris, my pension isn't coming from Russia. Just as well, eh? <laughs> it's a hungry bit of wood there. It's just soaking up the uh, sanding seal. Right, leave that. I'll do. And Dave, as Dave Oti said, Glenn, if you retire, just think how much more of Joe's singing you can hear. <sighs> There's a reason to stay at work, eh? Stay at work. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair. Joe's not feeling well today. Poor Joe. Michael Muir said, uh, McEwen said, I retired in September, but much as I like spending time, virtual time with you lot, he misses actual real people, so you've gone back semi-employed. What do you mean actual real people? You think I am a robot? Well, well, well you're not sure. And he's in Woodwork Learner. Good afternoon. Let's see. I think that's not too bad. I think we'll go for that. Leave that alone. Well, Yorkshire credit. You might have to Yorkshire get all that. Well, that will skip that one because it's a hollow bit. So I might jump over the top might, of that. Yeah, yeah. Try a bit. Try a bit of Yorkshire grit just for just for the fun. See what happens. A little bit of Yorkshire grit. Use sanding sealer first, which I did do for just for a change. <laughs> I have a bad habit like of forgetting it. Remember. Like Good, make sure Joe's singing for this bit. Lather it on like you've found just, it. Just get it. Yeah, put it on like somebody else is paying for it. It's a bit like using sandpaper. Use it like somebody else is paying for it. I haven't found her. No, Susie. Brian won't be doing the singing. Pete's no, Joe's doing the singing. She'll just have to listen a bit harder. She's doing it from home without a microphone. Oh, if you want me to sing, I'll sing. Like. No, well, no we don't. Speed, eh? what, what do you mean you don't? We don't want you to sing. No, we don't want you, to sing. you sure now? My dose Certainly. of Scottish tones. <clears throat> <clears throat> Says Glenn. <laughs> Just getting me answers in. <laughs> <laughs> you getting prepared there, Terry? Are you singing, Terry? No, no I'm not. After, after me building up your lovely voice and everything. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> that was a waste of time and effort, wasn't it? Should have a pre recorded a jewelry, really, should we? You know what I could do while I'm doing this? I could have a lot of drink tea. of tea, couldn't I? I could have a yeah. lot of drink of tea. You could. I can do that one handed. <sighs> yeah. Good work, Lance. He's Brian warm. will never retire fully. You're right. I'm never going to retire. I'm not going to lie down. My dad retired at 74. They shoot him said, if he lies down. Yeah. My dad retired at 74, he sat down in his chair, and two years later he was dead. He didn't get out of his chair again. That's not happened to me. Well, Clint says he's seven miles from home and he's blinking sure he can hear her singing. <laughs> 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 I love it. No, Louder, Joe. <laughs> Can be soft as your face. A light brown with me. 
Like from Pretty Yorkshire, gritty. Yeah, come back, Joe. All is forgiven. That's the closest you're getting to singing from me ever. Even Doug Miller's writing in the chat like he's singing along with it already. Yeah. Good man, Doug. Good man. Well done, Doug. Well done, Doug. I wonder if Glenn can hear you from, from wherever you are. You, in, you forgot in a lot America. of musical notes there, Doug. <laughs> you need to put them in too. Love your sugar. It's really good stuff. It Todd said, said retirement means you can watch other people work. I found that um, towards the end of my career, I was um, project manager and supervisor. So most what? of my job was getting, watching people work. Yep. That's, that's what happened to me in the army. If they stopped, you were telling them what to do next. Yep. And asking why have you stopped? There I stopped work, paid work. I started digging out the foundations for my workshop to start wood turning. So yeah. I actually worked quite a lot harder then. Greg yeah, physic physically, Dag. Yeah. Greg yeah. Dag says, greetings from Alberta, Canada. Hello, Greg. Welcome along. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Welcome along, Willie. All the way from Alberta. My geography is rubbish. Which, which side of I Canada is Alberta on? Well, I have no idea. It's other side, I think. Michael McEwen's from Victoria, British Columbia. We know that one is. It's the current place for birth in my head at the moment. In, in your head? Why, is there something else in your head? No. Well, that's it's one brain cell is busy watching the screen, so. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. Trying to work out what Kind of looking after the chat there, is it? <laughs> we haven't watched yet to see if you turn in anything, bro. Turn the outside of a wall. What wall do you want? I mean, oh, yeah, so you have. Goodness sake. See the inside. Anyway, you guys just want everything. <laughs> well, good. That's the first three hours taken. Are we going to do the next three hours? Turn the inside. Uh, no, I'm going to stick a bath. I'm going to time here now, Susie. Oh, don't know whether you want the time in Alberta. Thank you, Michael. I'm just to the right of British Columbia. To the right of British Columbia. Yeah, right on the other side. Do you have to turn right at Albuquerque? As was the the famous cartoon, what? Hmm. East side of the Rocky Mountains. Long walk to here then. Andy Woodward Luna said enforced retirement is not fun. Um I have to disagree, my retirement was enforced and uh, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. It's a mindset thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Change your life, slow down, do what you like. Make it make it work for you. Uh, I, nice less, uh, like, I earn nice a whole to... lot less money now <laughs> than I did when I was earning money. But then it's funny, as, but it's funny, I seem to have more money. You yeah, don't need as a, much. how does that work? You're not spending it going to work. A bit weird, though, isn't it? I only have one one suit in my wardrobe now. I used to have several of them, and they have to be cleaned yeah, every yeah. week. And yeah, I know. I was just saying. Fortune. I'll speed up a bit more. Put a little bit of shine on that. I'll worry about the bottom later. We'll finish that off. Before we have a tenant to remove anyway. There we go. A little bit of a shine on that now. That's not too bad. I can live with that. You go over there, buddy. I'm just going to saw this little knob off quickly <laughs> before I take this off the woodworm screw. Roy's a boy's in. Hello, Roy. <sighs> Archpodge says his word turning career is going to go crazy in three to three point five years. Good the kids man. are all out <laughs> of the house by then, so you won't. Uh, you hope they're out of the house by then. I, I wouldn't hold your breath for that one. Who knows your breath, Robert? No. Rex Terry? B said, Terry, um, how old is you? How old is your boy now? Forty. 
How, where does he live in Derry? With me. There you go. How old is my boy? Nearly 30. Where does he live in? In my house. Uh, see, <sighs> you guys aren't as smart as me. Yeah. My son uh, went to university. And when he finished university, he came home again. So I learned a lesson. Managed to get him to move out. The day after my daughter moved out, I changed the locks. <laughs> <laughs> Cunning plan. Why am so I unscrewing this? Unscrew us. Uh, I've got to say, that why am I? I've just found your thing. Why am I unscrewing this? Yeah, because you see, you've forgotten it's been that long. <laughs> Hello, Baz from Real Simple Things. Welcome aboard. Well, the boy said, I had to go a pull cord today. Yeah. Well done. They're fun to turn and and my lathe and my extractor. And I think my drill press were entirely paid for by nothing but pull cords. Light pulls, yeah. Light yeah. Pull, yeah. Light pull cords. Well done, Pete. I'll just, Very monotonous just, doing them once you've got to do yeah, two or three. Have, I have to put this back but... in the little bag. Oh, I, I did well, thousands because of them. I, but, um, because that's where it lives along with this drill bit. You've got a label on it. Yeah, got to have nope. a label on it. Oh, you see, need a label. No, I won't forget. Oh, no, the tan is too small. Nah, I'm only jogging. <laughs> <laughs> tan and better not be too small. Let me just do that and push that up. So I didn't tighten that up completely. I'm just going to push the tailstock up so as it seats itself in the chuck. Vincent Charlton's in the chat. Hello, Vincent. He says his daughter is 50 and still lives with him. I don't mind Matthew staying with us. I mean, it's fine. He's it's, it's a good lad. No bother. So, Robert, you got Doesn't no cause chance. any grief. Chris also suggesting move house and don't tell them where you went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, that is a bit sneaky. <laughs> pay, for, pay for a week's holiday for him somewhere. When they come back, you're gone. You're gone, yeah. The, the locks have changed. For sale signs down. <laughs> right. Let's uh, try and hold this out. Craig Dagg has said he retired after 45 years of journeyman, commercial carpenter. Started wood turning at 70. A good Found man. a new love for wood. Good man. Yeah. It's a different <clears throat> different approach to flat work and, and turning. I think with turning, you get to appreciate the wood more because you're making things that suit the wood rather than make the wood suit the job. Yeah. Rex B wants to know what happened to the Yorkshire grit in the bark, Brian. Nothing. It didn't go didn't into the bark at all. Right. If you do get Yorkshire grit in the bark, <laughs> then um, a brush will remove it. A uh, couple of brushes done. here. Two brushes as small as one. Um. And it will come out and leave no harm. If you've got bark Maybe on the you're probably not deep. going to um, polish the bark with wax. You're going to oil it. But um, any any overflow can be re removed with a brush. If you've got a very craggy piece of wood, then Yorkshire grit is possibly not the best way to go. Good afternoon to Circular Keith by Wood. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Keith. 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 Where have you been? Why are you late? <laughs> why are you late? Why are you late? Probably had this afternoon Kip. He's retired as well, by the way, people. As you know, Keith's retired as well. He's another one that he's living off all your earnings. Oops. Careful. Don't go past the centre. Well, I try not to. We'll have those little uh, little moments of indecision. Yeah. Right, let's have a look at that. See what we're going to do. I'll change the camera to there, maybe. I might help that. Is that better now? I think yeah. I'll make this opening a little bit bigger. Yeah, not too much bigger. Just another quarter of an inch of rope, Pete. Yeah. Right there. Good 
going to do another little bit of self-promotion here. If you haven't already seen it, I've set up this um, website called woodturners.uk, um, which is hosting other woodturners. Brian, yes. Terry, Mark, yep. uh, Colin, various have already signed up for it. Um, I'm not going to say too much about it. If you're a UK woodturner and you're interested in having a website of your own, have a read of that page. Excellent, guys. I have it. I can work it. <laughs> Amazing. Right, so we're going to hold this out a bit, but I'm going to use uh, the Simon Hope tools to hollow it out. Beard 16's in. Hello. Hi, Rich. Hi, Rich. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, just, I just, that's one camera that's not going to work again today. <laughs> Chris does want to know if there's going to be a, a rolled edge. Uh, no, that's the edge you're going to get, and I'm going to try and back hole it a little bit out to the edge. See how we get on. Using the Simon Hope six mil cutter. Andy Woodlerner said, "I learned to remember to make sure tail stuff is tight." After turning off balance pieces. Sorry, I, can't, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. He's learned to make sure his tail stock is tight after turning off balance pieces. Yeah. Yeah, it's... um, The tail stock is subject to a lot of adjustment as you work. And it's good to be in the habit of just checking the tightness every now and then. Talking to that, you've got a tenon on there, Brian. You might want to check it in a minute. What do you say, buddy? The chat you, the tenon, yeah, you, might, you might want to check the tenon. That'd be fun. As long as it flies to the back of the workshop and doesn't hit in the knee, we'll be fine. Yeah. Second slip will check it. I think I'm getting a bit deaf. You are daft as well. Robert Donald's right. got to go. Cheers, Robert. Bye, Robert. Thanks, Robert. Talk to you later, mate. Let's have a little look at the tenon. Just to... Nope, that's okay still. Looking good. Have you got the angled one that goes around in that tool as well? Yep. No, I've got another one. All right. Didn't need it. It was quite wide. Yeah. I'll come to that in a minute, yeah. For six mil, that's certainly old today, isn't it? Brent's got to go. He says he catch the balance later. Cheers, Brent. Bye, Brent. Right. I know camera angles are weird, but that looks too high to me, Brian. You could be right, Pete. You could be 100% right, Pete. Right. It's okay, then. Keep yeah, it's just getting into, getting into the middle because I'm about halfway down and I can't really get in the middle. You could oh, drill mate. a hole in. Take that's a just, hole in. That's drill just hole exactly in. what I'm going to do, guys. Stick is well, take my life a little there. bit easier. 30 mil force and a bit in it. And, start yep. out. and just do some backhauling rather than try and dig a hole with a Simon Hope car. Yeah, so no good 30, doing that. 30 mil, no, Charlton's Charl got work. a question for you, Brian. Yes, mate. Says, do you trust the Robert Sorby ham handle to the Simon Hope? Yes. Which means trust or prefer. Um, there you go. Robert Sorby, so Sovereign System. Mm hmm. Simon Hope, um, yeah, 3H ball gauge, horse a treat. As long as the collet is the right size for the bar, then it's going to work. But this works okay too. I use my uh, what's the least one? My Hamlet 20 inch handle on um, the um, Simon Hope hollower at times. Yep, as long as the collet so is the, the right size, you're fine. Yeah, as long as the right size for the bar, you're good. Yorkshire Grit saying, get saying, if only you had an extension for that. Uh, 
If only, if only. I yeah, thought somebody was making you something. Are hard to get, aren't they? Yeah, somebody was making one, weren't they, for you? Or two? Yeah, but oh, I think they're almost as hard as um, depth gauges. Yeah. yeah. What's the golden rule when you're using a fussner bit? Make sure you pull the chuck backwards when you're bringing it out. Yep. Or it falls out. Not right, Terry. Watch one of our videos. <laughs> Watch Terry's video. <laughs> It's easy oh, done, and he had, he did actually have his hand on it, but he wasn't pulling it. Yeah, I was pulling it, but it uh, it jammed. So, bye bye. Decided to go. It left. It went went for a six, not a four. In cricket. Yeah, we could go another another full depth of the Fosner bit. Roger Kent wants to know if you Brian, if you're going to buy a, an SK one one four. Chuck, and a robust tool rest when you sell the vase. Not been buying any robust tool rest. Tool rests I've got are perfectly adequate. Nothing wrong with them. Uh, and I still haven't decided whether I'm buying a... That should be better now, guys. I think we're about right Jennifer's now. woken up. Hello, Jennifer. I'm still not convinced whether I'm buying a... SK114 or not. Jennifer's okay. just woken up, Brian. Say hello to Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. How are you today, girl? <coughs> Better take that off again. Eh? I have treated myself to the robust nine-inch tool rest. You did not. And... Yeah, the robust rest does look nice. It is nice. It is nice. When I'm up your way again, Pete, I'll have a play with that. If it's good yeah. Enough. But what, it's what a problem it with 406. I got the smaller lathe than uh, Brian and Terry. And the short tool rest on the 406 doesn't fit the lathe that well, so the robust right, is um, okay. an added bonus. But if your tool rest works, then it works. Talking about tool rest, I better put this one back in place. Eh? I can't remember which video it was, uh, Andy, so let's Brian can remember. Not off the top of my head, no. Mm -hmm. have to watch them all again, mate. I don't know which video it is either, but Jeff Hornung's is the most impressive I've seen. Yep. He forgets to hold the uh, Jacob's Chuck back into the Morse taper, and it comes out and does a proper workshop. <laughs> Quite dramatically. That's better for one, isn't it? It just makes life a whole lot easier when you've got a bit of a hole yeah. in that one. That's what yeah. you should do with it. <clears throat> and Justin, I've seen the tool rest from Nova. It's similar to the robust hardened round bar on the top. Um, I haven't seen them for sale where I could actually pick one up and hold one, which is um, something I wanted to do before I put paid any money for any of them. Mm. I did buy the Stars and Bates round bar version um, online, so I haven't seen it, and I was very pleased with that. And I still use that. But sometimes it's just nice to get in a bit closer with the uh, right. robust one. Let's try uh, this little tool. This is the hope we're turning flat bar with the swan neck on it. 10 mil cutter or 8 mil? It's an 8 mil cutter, I think. Looks about 8 mil to me. I'm not going to measure it, but it looks about 8 mil. Look about 8, yeah. Could get that tool rest a little bit closer. A little bit closer, yeah. But you've got to be on the flat bar. That's the problem, I think. Have you not? Yeah. Davies in, web for resin and wood creations. Oh, Davies. Yeah. This is quite quite a nice tool to use as well. 
It's dirty too. Look at it. Then, so he suspects the robust ones are more rigid and they're more triangle shaped. Yeah. That is a problem, unless, because we've done a couple of years without any shows, it's really difficult to compare one against another. Yeah. You kind of want to wrap your hand around them and, and see how they fit you. Um, unless you've got them both in the same space, then it's difficult to do that. Paul Woodrock has just joined us, hello, Paul. Surprised just how quick that side actually cut. Oh. Doing a good job, Jimmy Surgeon. Oh, Jimmy. Let me just check this again. See where we are on the inside. Right, I don't want to go much thinner there. <clears throat> Jennifer just said. Get Mark get said. <laughs> has your Mark. wood cleaner gone? Your workshop cleaner gone on strike, Brian? Look at the state yeah, of no, that floor. Not yet. She'll be home in half an hour. I mean, I'll be... <laughs> yeah, <that'd be> <laughs> uh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can guarantee we're going to tell her about that comment when she gets there. Uh, uh, he's with Chris. He's got to go. Shoot, we'll yeah, catch the rest later. Thanks, Bye -bye. Barry. So we're using both sort of push and pull cuts here. So pull cut on out to the edge and then push it back in again. Just make sure we come right across from the bottom so we've got a nice curve on the bottom too. On out to the mid wall and then up to the top. Thank you all thickness, that cuts quite quick that. Well I'm actually listening to it as well guys because mm, you can hear it's getting thinner as well though. You can hear it's getting a bit thinner, so it's okay here, we're finished down to there. So I'm going to take a little bit more from here down to here, uh, and that'll be that. Just a little more. So no further than the bottom of that bark coming back the way this time. Right there. that tourist back a little bit just kind of getting off the flat there or off the the wide part of the bar Ed Wilson's joined us from the west coast of Arizona Hello Ed, Hello, Ed. I'm just going to put the, the tool just against the edge. Just go let the tip run against the edge. I'm just going to bring it back without cutting and just feel if there are any bumps and lumps in there. And there isn't any. So we'll 
call that good, I think. Put that back on its tool rest. Let's have a look in here. I think I'm happy with that, guys. We're happy, we're happy. There are some little bits of tear out in there, just on the end grain down here in particular. But we should be able to sand that. Let's have a look, can we get the same hope sander in there? I think we can. Yeah. And we'll go with a bit of fresh 80 grit. There's quite a lot of talk in the chat about uh, Steve Sinner's tool rests versus Robust, versus Nova, versus whatever. Um, any tool rest will do the job, so long as it's nice and stable, and it fits your lathe well. Yes, the body is the most important. To where, your, where your fingers fit on it, and that is a personal thing. Same as lathe height and all the rest of it, it's personal. It depends on how big your hand is how long your fingers are and the best way to find the right tool rest is to go to a show and wrap your hand around them yeah play with them all so, unfortunately i have never been at a show um so we've been denied okay. that for the last couple of years so uh, yeah i've only been on yeah. it for two years <laughs> so so with anything that you, if you want to compare one against the other you kind of need them in close proximity so you can actually Grab hold of yeah. them. Yeah. The alternative to that is um, go around each other's workshops and see what the other people are using. Try them out. Look Does that actually mean going and talking to people? Yeah. yeah. It, face to face. Uh, uh, in, in real what's, life. What's, what's that about? Well, you know, you're not welcome anywhere anyway, Brian, but you know. Oh, that's true. I'm Scottish, of course. Forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and all you do is come in and put labels on things like slaves yeah. and bandsaws and I know, it's just, it's just trying to keep you guys honest so I've just changed a stick with a little pad on it just to put a bit more control around the edge there now I just roll that edge over a little bit my infamous rolled edge And Grin, the Yorkshire Git is uh, saying that Steve Sinner's stuff is very good, designed from a wood turner's point of view. Well, something does seem to be lacking in some things. We were discussing earlier about the um, tailstock. Mm. The, the base of the tailstock should be behind the start of the quill, so it's out of the way. Um, Emma was saying in one of her lives recently that her lathe, the banjo, is curved towards the tailstock. So she's put it on backwards to avoid that. Um, it's, it's as if designers come in and say, oh, that would look pretty, and they're not woodturners. Yeah. Are there any um, any that actually face forwards rather than facing backwards like mine does? I have seen some, but I can't think of the brands off the top of my head. Robert Buchanan's walking up. There's nothing wrong with being Scottish, is there, Brian? Not a thing, buddy. Not a thing. God's country. Mike, Mike. Michael McEwen said, Brian, you will be welcome at the AAW Symposium in June in Tennessee. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Just got to get on a plane. Just just have to get a plane there. <laughs> it could be expensive. <laughs> oh, oh, you're halfway there already. You can row it. Yeah. You can row it. Listen to you. <laughs> just getting your little 
kayak and off you go. Tell them all fluffy bits off. I don't want to take any more off of that because that's getting kind of weak around the edge there. I need a bit more sanding down at the bottom. And here Vincent, here's there. going to the uh, AAW. Uh, he'll try and bring Brian with him. And you see. Who is? It's easier to take Terry. You can fit Terry in your luggage. Yeah. I'm going to have to pay for a hotel then. Just actually getting this to, to sit exactly in the right place where you want the sanding to happen. And keep it there, it's not that easy. Stop it. Stop it. You kind of need to do it as if it's two things because you've got the curve to the outside. Yep. That's what I'm kind of concentrating now, just this bottom corner here. To try and just smooth it out. There's a little tool mark in there. Well, it's not a little tool mark, it's a great big tool mark, but no matter. <laughs> That'll come out eventually. That should do. I think that should do it. Can we have a change of camera angle? Because Brian hasn't actually commented on the tool mark yet. Um. What do you want to see? Yeah, we can't, see, see, no, yeah, we can't see it even from there. So it looks perfect here, Brian. Oh. Can't see it in there either. No. no. So all in all, if you can't see it, it didn't happen. That's the, that's the rules. There's no picture. You can't. It, it, it didn't happen, is that it? Yeah, it didn't happen. No picture of it. Let me just have a quick look myself then. That's Robert suggested yeah. it'd be a one way trip for, for you, Terry. Yeah, I see that. As long as you can throw goodies on the way back. That's right, and Robert can keep me. There is yeah, a, 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 this, with, this uh, branch inclusion. Me. This branch inclusion you can see here is causing me untold grief and faith. Not be able to do much about that though. No, nah, there's not a lot I can do. It just um, because if, if you if you're using a bowl gouge, you could get a nice a nice cut or something down in there to, just to smooth that tear out. But because of using the scraper, it, it's not going away. It's and there feature. is another there's a, a branch inclusion there and another one in there inside. It's a feature. Wow, it's weird. Yeah, I can't do anything about it. It's just have to be the way it is. That's the way it is now. Let me just bring that round there a bit. Michael McEwen said, Robert B, you're right. There's nothing wrong with being Scottish. Um, no, there absolutely isn't anything nothing wrong with being Scottish. Uh, except for the fact that um, Brian is Scottish and we've got technically out of him for something. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. I'm used to these Englishmen, boys. It's okay. It could, could be worse. It could be Welsh. Well, you have to realise, though, is when, oh, when you Mary... Did, you, you didn't when, go there, did you? I when did. Mary when Mary next door goes in to see Brian, who is Irish. <laughs> she talks in her Irish accent, don't you know? Brian's voice changes immediately from Scottish to Irish. <laughs> it doesn't change immediately. It did. Okay, it does. <laughs> I think oh. we're listening to a different person. You want to hear me when I go home to Scotland? <laughs> Come on, well, we probably can't understand. We need an interpreter then, won't we? Yep. You should go to Inverness, Terry. I should? Yep, because they talk very much like you. Nah, they don't. They won't understand me up there. Oh, they would, certainly. Well, they talk Hobbit. They take the, the, the they speak the best Queen's English, apparently, yeah. in the country. I say um, that's all the good. Then perhaps I'll go. <laughs> Greg Dag has made a comment. I'm not quite certain what he's getting at, but he said, "Will there be information on commentator 
YouTube content. I appreciate any and all advice you have to offer this new turner. Well, we'll give us the best advice we can, Greg, but um, I'm not quite sure what your question is there. What's commentator on YouTube content? Yep, it's hard to answer the question if you don't understand the question. Is that obviously yeah. another sort of uh, maybe YouTube commentators? Uh... That's, that's the problem I had at school. <laughs> I could never understand the question. <laughs> I know My we can understand your answer. I wasn't there very often. Or, or at least that's what the teachers told me. <laughs> it's along the lines of, are you thick? Can you not read? Mm. No such thing as ADHD or anything when I went to school or dyslexia or yeah. anything like that. Slap around the angles if you yeah. behave, that yeah. was it. Clip around the ear. You were either bright or you were stupid. Nothing in between. Right, the thing is, Andy, I, I wasn't learned to speak proper England when I was a children. I just hear my dog barking. I did. Shell's home. Just, just, heard, <laughs> just heard the dog barking. <laughs> I, I thought, biscuit. my God, the Come dog's escaped. Biscuit coming, is it? Shell's home. Don't know. Uh, can't answer that. On the grounds, I might dogs have are, to. Dogs are pleased to see her, so that's fine. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's all that matters, really. That's two out of three. That's all, that's all that matters, really. <laughs> Two out of three. <laughs> well, the dogs are a priority. 100% dogs are a priority. Now, with that bark, to try and keep it, should I put some super glue on that, do you think? Just leave it. Uh, probably not, because the edge looks tight. Yeah. It is quite tight. It looks a Just good, put uh, super glue. good sealer. Just put that sanding sealer all over my good, nice polished outside. Well, that's that polished, so you can it? just buff it up again, can you? Careless, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a bit careless. Yeah. Just because you got a bad knee. No excuses. I'm blaming my knee to I'd be inclined to actually oil the bark. Hmm. You sand it, uh, Now he tells me I've sanding sealed the damn thing. But, yeah, that's just my preference. I'm just sanding sealed all over it now. That was good advice, wasn't it? I shouldn't worry. I just find oil bark looks nice, feels nice. Well, I'll let that sandy seal a stroke in, then I'll throw some oil at it, it'll be fine. Yeah. Right now, next thing. How to get this tenon off. This might be interesting. Yeah, that'll be all right. Nice long, narrow piece to go in to fit the bottom. I don't know if Coming I've got up. a bit. Away you go. Well, turn a piece. Yeah, that's too big. That's just bit. Too small. Uh, it's not. No, how far does it go in? Does it go into the bottom? Yep. That's right, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. You've got the door space to wrap around it, haven't you? You have to take that little piece off on the end there. This little bit here? Yeah, that'll make it. Yeah. Probably very good to see you, know, does it? You don't want much, do you? And just slightly round it as well, very slightly, if you've got a round, round inner side. Just a little yes. bit, so you get more yes. contact. Yes, yes, dear. I'm doing it now, dear. Just a bit. It's not so like Michelle, you. Well. Andy Woodward Learner is suggesting you just sand the turn off. That sounds like hard work to me, though. Yeah, it's not hard work, that is. Keep it easy. Very slight. That's it. That's enough. Yes, yes. <clears throat> it's a sharp edge off. Yeah, so. Greg Doug said, do any of you have YouTube content? Yes, Greg. Yes, Greg. TJ yes, Turning. Yes, Greg. Brian Hart returning. I have, I've I have got two. I've got a premiere on at uh, 7.30 GMT tonight on there. I think you I want to learn all about tools then. I think I have. Um, 
you can see 108, my 180 videos tutorial. you can look at. If you want to go and have a look, you may find something of interest. Then again, you might not. <laughs> so that has to go on there. Greg, I'm absolutely rubbish in front of a camera, but um, I am doing a live in two weeks' time on the Monday afternoon at 1 p.m. GMT. That's going to be too big, Terry. Mm -hmm. I need another button. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Oh, dear. Oh, well, I'll just cut that one thing a bit. Quite a few of the guys, they're coming in now and telling you that they've got channels. Quite a few of the guys in in the chat have got channels. They have, I have loads. Um, There's loads of guys with channels. And to be honest, most of us have subscribed to each other. So if you go to any one of us and just look at who we're subscribed to, you'll probably find the others. There you go, that's, Greg. That's, that's about right, yeah. Go to that channel. There's plenty of videos on there how to use the tools <clears> and things we've done. You want to look at mine? You haven't put your, you put link to your channel in there. You did not, yeah, did I you? Know. Yeah, yeah, you did. I did. That's that's your badge's channel. You have to go and watch that one. The badge. The badge. Don't forget the badge. We may have a problem here. There could be trouble ahead. Why? What have you done? There's no center mark on that. Well, as long as it's flat, it's just going to... thing is, great. you'll find there's a, uh, a mixture on pretty much every channel. Some, some of it be educational, some of it be just for the fun of cutting it. Yeah, don't look at mine um, for education. Yes, do look at Brian's for education. He's really yeah. good. Good. But um, I didn't say that, did I? No, you lied. You, you did it out loud, too. Oh, don't look at Brian's. He's rubbish. No, um, accidentally, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I have that recorded. Don't look at mine. Don't look at mine. That's going to be my bad. ringtone from now on. Look at Brian's channel. He's pretty good. Hey! Afternoon. Good run, Paul's in. Good afternoon, Paul. Hi, Paul. Welcome along, bud. So that needs There's to a mixture of content. Then, some of it's educational, some of it's design ideas, some of it is just for the fun of it. Some of it's uh, just for the hell of it. Just for the hell of it. I'll get away with that, I think. So, again, with this tenon removal, work towards the headstock. When Paul's come in to see the last bit. Ah, uh, thanks, Paul. Came to the exciting bit. In case I blow this off the lathe. Be like me, wouldn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. Whoops. Careful. Uh, yeah, I've got to rub the bevel here and then just take this on in. And hope you've left enough meat in the bottom so you don't make a funnel. I'm not hoping at all because I know there's enough meat left. Well, he couldn't be bothered to come in today, but um, Mike Walt, who sometimes prefers to go out and drive buses and spend, yeah. spend time with us guys. And work. You he's know. got, um, going back 10 years or so, YouTube content. Um, a lot of it is actually aimed just at the beginners. At the newer turner, or the turner the newer with less turner. experience. Yeah, the newer turner, yeah. Um, and Lewis is another one who does quite a lot of... Klondike Craftsman. No, right. Yeah, the Klondike Craftsman. Yep. You've got to remember the Klondike Craftsman. Yeah, um, the in front of it. He does them, oh, and they, they are titled line. Beginner Projects. So near wet um, job, definitely worth a look at. Go too thin, Bry, on my snap. 
Andy Bass has just joined us for a few minutes over his coffee break. Hi, Andy. Welcome along, mate. Michel Usby's in the chat. Hello, Michel. So this, this is the only, time I the, use a, the only time I use a spindle gauge on a bowl. Slow it down. So I'm gonna, gonna get, yeah, I'm going to slow it down, can I? So I'm getting this, the stop switch position just under my knee. Good knee or bad knee? My good knee. So that's a way down to... Change the camera. Close up. That is close up. Oh, oh this one. Is that all right? Is that yeah, washed out? Yeah. That's it. It washed out, but it's okay. So I've got to rub the bevel. Yeah. I'm going to have my knee just by the switch. And as soon as the nub stops turning, I go press the button. And I've got the pr all the pressures going towards the headstock. There's the nub stop turning. Press it with my knee. Stop that. Hold the bow. I'm going to throw this head tail stop. And that's how you cut off the little bit of the bomb. Michelle, Brian is very glad that you're home because he did say earlier yeah. that you would be the one to clean up the workshop. Yeah, and <gasps> give him a chocolate biscuit on your way out. <laughs> you lie to other people. He needs a, he needs a chocolate biscuit as well. Well, actually, it wasn't Brian that said that, Michelle. It was all the rest of the chat said it, everybody. It was, I. Is, is, okay. What's happened to your cleaner, apparently, was, was the yeah, comment. Said, yeah. Brian mm. said she's at work. Uh, yeah, no, I did not. Be home shortly. You rat bag. Do all the she, cleaning. She knows better than that, boys. She knows better than that. Well, she can she watch it back. She knows I'm too much of a chicken to end like that. <laughs> <laughs> Michael McEwen's go, got to go. It's 7 a.m. where he is, and he's got to Bye, go. Bye, Michael. Michael. Off to work. Off to work, it's right. Off to work, you there go. There we go. So we'll just put a little sanding disc in there. Take that out. And we'll get quickly give the bottom a bit of a sand. Change the camera again now. Already. Overhead. Andy Woodwork Learner said he wasn't even in the chat. He heard you say that, Brian. <laughs> uh, Andy wouldn't be already be known as a bit of a manure agitator. I think you were agitator. Uh, yeah. Glenn was back there and said he did say that, Michelle. Who was that, Glenn? Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, he, he's, he's a well known agitator as well. And Michelle trusts Glenn. So. Totally, absolutely, 100%. Glenn says it has to be gospel. Right, let me just, uh, that'll do. That's cool. Happy with that. Switch that off. That'll do. Take that out of there. Tidy that up a little bit. Three hours cleaning, Michelle. Won't we'll take three hours to clean this workshop, guys. It'll be clean in 10 minutes. That's all it takes. As soon as Michelle gets out there, it'll be done. Yeah. Park that back up on his chuck, buddy. Rob, Rob C. P. Wood is in. Hello, Rob. That's uh, Rob, my chuck, buddy. This is the underpainting of his first portrait. You can do that on YouTube, Rob. Is that yeah? Are you filming it, Rob? We need to see that. Is he, is he doing a new portrait? I'll send you my picture, Rob. What sort of <laughs> a portrait? Hmm. Yeah. What, what you know? What person? Uh, dancer? Animal? Oh. Too far. Yeah, look at that. There you go, guys. One little bowl with a natural edge. Oh, nice. I like the way this came round, didn't it? The actual wood here and this side, uh, the bark is all the way down to the bottom. That's good. It's hollowed out and undercut. Fairly <laughs> substantial undercut there. Buttermilk 3696 is in. Hi, guys. Hey, buttermilk. So there you go, guys. There's that little bowl. 
Very good. And there's a little boy just come to check on me. Morris is back. It's Morris. Morris. Well, Morris. Says, I do like the simple device to hold the sanding disc. I think that was my invention. That's that one was Pete's invention. Um, so there it is. Where I've on, never Brian. seen anybody else do it until I did it. It's just but, a waste uh, block. So I was turning, and this this bit's left in there, Chuck. Once you part it up. Down a bit. That's it. So I drill a hole the size of your arbor. Six mil. Take it. Take it to the bandsaw. Six mil usually. Yep. Yeah. Take it to the bandsaw, and you can either uh, better if you make a double cut because it squeezes more. And then once you squeeze it, it kind of squeezes back together and scrapes the arm. It's as simple as that. As long as you put it in the chuck with a slit in one of the gaps of the chuck. Yeah. Ah, you've got to line it up properly. Let me just demonstrate that. So if I put that chuck down there, can you still see that? So there. Yeah. Put the line so it's in between two of the jaws. And then just squeeze your chuck up. And it'll grip that and it's perfect. It's a great idea. Excellent. Idea. A, We've all got them. What a Pete from Twisted Trees ideas, and it's a genius idea. So you don't have to buy fancy arbors, you can make them yourself. There we go, guys. Any questions or any confusions that you want to ask me about or not? Only one. Is it Morris or Maurice? It's Maurice. The mouse is called Maurice. <laughs> it's Maurice the Lewis, mouse. Lewis, Tom Craft, and begs to differ. If Lewis, the, he can beg all he likes. He's stay in Canada. <laughs> His is Morris, mine's is Maurice. Oh, he says it the other way around. But, yeah. I know he does, but sure we'll worry about that. <laughs> well, he's in the chat anyway, so he may have a comment. Is it Morris yeah. or Maurice? Yeah, yeah, don't start him now. He's bad enough. Don't, you don't need to. Oh, look, Yours is an imposter, he says. Yeah, the way wrong. Yeah, oh, there we go. I can see you. Oh, but I wonder I couldn't see the two marks on that. There we go, guys. Thank you very much for spending your after your lunchtime and a bit more with me today. I've enjoyed it. I hope Terry and Pete have as well. Oh, I loved it. Every right. second. Most, most importantly, I hope you guys have all, all have all enjoyed it. Yes, they have. If you have, give it a thumbs up on your way out. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, press the button. Think, hit the bell. Hit the subscribe and the bell. The bell. Subscribe and hit the bell. We we all try and we try to have a little bit of education, a little bit of fun, and just uh, just kind of enjoy ourselves. That's what we're trying to do. Hodgepodge <laughs> says it was all right. Thanks. Well, don't you don't have to come again, Robert. You can, sure, sure you can Robert. Maybe, maybe a paramedic. <laughs> Buzz off. Yeah, who's Vince Charlton at the Wilsby? The oh, Wilsby Wood Turner. Yeah, he came in earlier. That's a new name to me. Yeah. Thanks for coming in to have a look. Okay, guys, we'll call it a day at that um, and let you guys get on with the rest of your day. Thanks very much for watching. It's goodbye from Terry. Yeah. Bye, everybody, and goodbye have a great Pete. time. See you next time. Cheers, everyone. Take care. And it's goodbye from me. Bye, everybody. If we can find the mouse, it's not working. There it goes.